Come and get started on a new mission, mission. a new direction, direction. a new intention. intention. Welcome to 5.8G Alive at Connections 50 Plus. I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite. And I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, catering to all your prospects in the third act of life. Economic well-being, well-being. social gratification, gratification. personal fulfillment. fulfillment. Join us on Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Connections 50 Plus Facebook page, YouTube channel, and on Gael the Caribbean. Hello everyone, good evening. How are you? Welcome to 5.8G Alive. It is Holy Week, a blessed Holy Week to all of the Christians in our midst. I am Tatarian Joseph Brathwaite, one of the co-creators of Connections 50 Plus, which brings you 5.8G alive and with me as usual. Hi everyone, good evening and welcome. I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, the other co-creator of Connections 50 Plus, and you are on 5.8G Alive. Yes, Theria, this is Holy Week, and this is a very important week for us Christians, for us Catholics to to really, you know, prepare. Mm-hmm. You know, in this nice, a nice way to prepare, very spiritual. <laughs> well, Jennifer, last week we started a conversation with our older millennials, and we are yeah. trying to get a handle, you know, this being a tribe business is very, very important, Jennifer. Jennifer, do you know that there are seven living generations right now? Seven. No, I didn't know that. I, I mean, I, I know at least thought of the four, of course, maybe five, because if you take our the I baby have a boomers. Graphic. I have a but, graphic um, that describes yeah, it, that I would like. Quite to interesting. Add. And when I found this graphic, okay, so Jennifer, I'm starting with this one, which gives the six main generations. So our 71 plus are the builders, then the boomers, okay, interesting. 52 to 70, then the generation X, 37 to 51, who are our children, some of them, then generation Y, 22 to 36, Some of them are our children. Some are our grandchildren. Then we have this Z generation between 7 and 21. And Jennifer, the newest kids on the block is this alpha. (laughs) The ones under 7. But I want to share the other graphic. And So before you move on, Mm -hmm. um, is that a change in the name? Because um, the generation should have been referred to as the millennials. The, the, the millennials are, in fact, yes, the, the millennials are Y. The millennial, no, Generation X, yes. But the other graphic has, yes, yes the Generation X are the millennials. But okay. there is a group that is missing that is very important to our current communities that is left off of this. And that's the group that I wanted to put in. So Jennifer, the other screen that I put up I use because it gave the names and the ages. But this lady or gentleman at the end, who is the person over 95? So really, the silent generation are those who are from, um, say, 78 to 95. That's these people here. We are the boomers. But this greatest generation are the ones who are over 96, 96 and over. And Jennifer. Like mommy. Like exactly. And how many of us have great, great grannies? Now, Jennifer, very often in a home, you could have out of these seven generations, you could have four or five. And like you, a boomer, yes. and a grandchild that is an alpha. <laughs> when- when your grandchild. No, as you speak, that's 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 definitely um that's a fact because if you use my family, for example, mm-hmm. with my mom who is 101, yes, my eldest sister, um, who's who maybe between 78 and 95, 50, 
you know, a daughter mm -hmm. 50, who would have sister who I have my her yeah. son actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have a son or daughter who is 50. Yeah. So you're a grandchild who so you're looking, you're, you're going down the line. Yeah. My mom. My sibling who would be in the asylum, oh, your sibling mom, in the silent generation. The greatest between. And if you're using me as, as any boomers boomer. generation, baby boomers, mm -hmm. then the Gen X will be the, the, those in the 50s. And 47, yes. 47. That's my nephew one day. Yeah. And, and then, then millennials. Your children. So more my, my <laughs> daughter's age. Yeah. Then the Gen C, who I have my nieces and they 11 to 25. Nieces 20. Yes, right? 11 to 25. And teenagers. Then, yeah, the teenagers. And then the little baby ones, like my grandma. Alpha. So Alpha. definitely, look how easy it was, Tarian, to go through the generations. Yeah. And I have never done this before. We just take things for granted and yeah. everybody happy going along. But and showing this chart here, of, okay. what what I really would like our yeah. cohort to do is to go onto YouTube and just Google the generations, the living generations, and get the characteristics. Because, and I'm going to stop sharing now for a bit. Because Jennifer, each of these generations. Their outlook, mm -hmm. their values are so different. What they want out of life, what they're prepared to do, how they look yeah. at the others. And, you know, sometimes we find our cohort complaining mm -hmm. that they have nowhere to go, they have no friends, nobody, and you have expectations about mm -hmm. family. Jennifer, I think we need to open our eyes. <laughs> Definitely. And I think that's why... I like looking at that chart. What it does really, it help you, I think, understand your family dynamics. Yes. And understand why you may have the, the, the communication problems that we talk about, the conflicts, not understanding. Because for instance, when you see that wide gap between the, the, the greatest this, or the silent generation, even to the millennials, mm -hmm. you're talking about at least this a could, three generation. This could gap be, this could be gra great grandpa to this person, and the and then even go down, you go down to the Gen Z, which is yeah. you know, um, this could be a great great. Really <laughs> see the reason why there is a lot of of misunderstanding, the changing of values, you know. It's a big difference. It, there is a big difference. It and is. if we see this, I think we would be in a better position to understand or try to under, get a better understanding of how they think. Definitely, Jennifer. I love Definitely. that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, after we spoke to Mandy and Rinald last week, it was interesting. Rinaldo last Rinaldo. week. Yes, it was interesting. Mm -hmm that they both came down to look, they, they're the more patient ones, the millennials, they, 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 they're more patient and, and accommodating of the older generations. And they came to values, but those generations after, because they are out of tech, the alpha generation does not know about rotary telephone. They don't know about writing. And, uh, they, they don't, they're not required to do penmanship. And they're not required to sit yeah. on the books. So how we would expect them to behave, they're not behaving. And you know, that's why today we decided we are going a little deeper with our conversations. <laughs> with, yeah. We're going with early millennial now. We're going with early millennial. We're going with people who are in their late 20s. We have two other interesting young people. And I think we, we, what we have to do is <laughs> to pause and listen because we're asking them two simple questions, you know. What do they think about us? <laughs> and simply, we are asking them, how do they see us? Not how we see them, yeah. how do they see us? And most importantly, to facilitate the communication is 
what would they like us to know and understand about them? Because Jennifer, if, if, if we don't build a bridge, we will be very isolated in a little moat. Anyway, yeah. let's go have this conversation and come back and, and let's, let us as Prangalang used to say, we will learn something. <laughs> yep, I'm sure we'll learn a lot. <laughs> okay, great. So audience, we have some more young uns with us. <laughs> and we are going a little younger than we did last week. Because we really, Jennifer, we really do believe that it's important for us to oh, yes. listen to the younger generation. So I'm going to start by first asking this young lady and this young gentleman to just introduce themselves very briefly. And in the modern age, I'm going to go with the gentleman first. Um, my name is Tevin Commission. I'm 30 <laughs> years old. I am a design consultant and entrepreneur. I am married with one child. Mercedes. Well, I'm Mercedes Harden. I am an attorney at law litigation, to be more exact. I will be 30 in a month, not married or any kids. Um, but aside from being an attorney, I decide I also like to bake. So, you know, hopefully that could be my entrepreneurial side to it. So, yeah. yeah. Right off the bat, we're seeing Jennifer and for you all that you have no problems having multiple careers and multiple definitions of what is life. Is that absolutely not? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Do we do we look strange in this long lifetime career that we <laughs> what is your view of that? I know I'm going off the script, but what is it? what is your views of that? Well, I have no choice. Um, when I came out of school, I think I came straight into a recession. Um, from that recession, it was hard to get a job. So the job I was able to acquire, I just stayed in it. But with that, I was paid a low wage. Mm -hmm. So to make ends meet and to make life you know, comfortable for yourself, you have to pick up another job and so on. And so it was kind of like no choice for me to make, you know, to live a comfortable life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was not difficult be going onto the entrepreneurial stream. No, it them. was. It was very difficult. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult. You'll probably hear it <laughs> going along. <laughs> <laughs> it was a roller coaster. That's like good. And Mercedes. Um I I think for me it was always in comparison to thinking of the older, not for lack of a better word, older generation to our time. You know, you grew up hearing your parents and your grandparents sticking in one profession. Usually that the job that they enter is the job that they tend to stay in for most or all of their life. And I think growing up, my personality never led me to that because I was always somebody who was interested in doing many different things. I mean, when I was small, I will admit my dream was never to become an attorney. I, my dream is to become a pilot, and it still is today. So, you know, there are many things that I always, always like to do. You know, one minute I like to bake, I'm into flying. At one point, I wanted to be an accountant. I'm an attorney today, you know. So, to me, I mean, I'm 30 years old, and I would like to think that I have only just begun. This is just my foundation. But I mean, as Tevin, you know, pinpointed, you know, at the end of the day, you have to look at finances, you have to look at, you know, the job market, you have to look at what is available to you. Sometimes what you plan to do is not what goes with your way. So, I mean, at this point in time, I would like to think that I accomplished a lot and I'm heading on to the journey of where I'm headed to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And earlier we were speaking, you, in fact, three months ago, you were in a completely different position. Correct, you know, I mean, I, I didn't think I would be where I am today up until three weeks ago. So, I mean, that is just an example to show you that life, life really does have an unexpected thing, you know, but I mean, once you're persistent and you know what you want to do yes. and, you know, you want to make money, you know, you, you will always be persistent and you will get where you want to be. Okay. That's what true. I'd like to ask you, did your parents, for both of you, 
Did your parents have um, influenced your choice of careers? No. I would say no. My parents always allowed us to pick whatever it is that we wanted to do. But if I have to say that they help guide me in terms of being that support, being that backbone, being that motivator, then yes. But in terms of the profession in itself, what me or my sisters wanted to do, no, we were always open to choose what or how many things we wanted to do or not do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, for me, Kevin, what would you say? Well, I knew what I, well, I'm going to say it like I knew. I, I was interested in drawing homes when I was in standard one. Never knew what it actually meant. I remember asking my father, yo, uh, you know, like, is there a profession for like drawing? Because I like drawing, right? And he was like, there is uh, someone who gets paid very well for drawing, which is called an architect. I looked it up in the encyclopedia and I was intrigued. And from that day, I just started to sketch and, you know, build up that, that skill, right? But in terms of pushing you in that direction or helping you develop yourself, you know, that was purely on me. You know, all the decisions I would have made would have been on my own. Um, it's not until I got into Form 5 where the assistants really came in to help me get my first job. But after that, it was basically me, you know, navigating the, the waters with my own career and stuff like that. So I, I would say I did not really have that support. I had some from my mom. Mm -hmm. you know, but otherwise it was, it was, and I guess it's because it's a profession that not many people know architects personally. Yeah. So it's a bit harder to help you along the way, or it's harder to get in contact with an architect who would necessarily want to help someone who hasn't gone through the, the, the route of obtaining a degree and stuff like that. So it was a little difficult, uh -huh. but I managed and um, yeah. Great, great. So we are, you're in a show called Five Point Eight Year Life where we are focused on making life better for people in the 50 to 80 age group. <clears throat> and very often we dump or we love or we smother. We do all kinds of things to you all <laughs> as the, I would say the cusp of the Gen X millennials. You are, you are a mix of the two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Honestly, do you see this generation of ours, the 50 to 80 cohorts who are literally baby boomers, your, your, your parents or your grandparents? How, how do you see us? You don't need to be polite, be kind, but not necessarily. <laughs> I mean, feel, it feels a bit unfair because I'm talking to the age group. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, so my grandmother was a lovely person, right? She died at 84. Right? Mm -hmm. She was lovely. I, I respect her highly. You know, a lot of um, her teachings would have passed on to me through conversation. Um. My grandfather was the opposite, right? He had a very toxic approach for meals. Mm. That being said, my parents, um, same thing probably would have passed on for my dad at a point. And my mom is very progressive. Mm. So, when you say toxic, on the male and the masculine side, what do you mean? In a sense, women, you know, do certain things and men do certain things. So men provide and stuff like that. You know, women are nurturers and you know, take care of children and stuff like that. And that's not something I entirely agree with because 40 years ago, 50, 60 years ago, you know, men were the main providers. Women would usually be home taking care of the children. But today, women are not home. They are working alongside men. So to me, it's a bit unfair to say that men are the breadwinners when, you know, the women are also out there bringing home 
no money, bringing in the money, and have to take care of children and you know put food on the table and stuff like that. So to me, it's not very progressive. And in a sense, it kind of perpetuates a cycle of that toxic you know, approach, especially in a, in, a, in a time where we are trying to go forward with equality and stuff like that, you know? So um, for me, perpetuating it in a conversation with a younger generation and beyond is like breeding that toxicity, you know? And for me, I, I, I believe in breaking the cycle, you know? And we'll see I have a daughter. So I don't want her to yeah. grow up believing, you know, your place is in a house or in the kitchen. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's very regressive, you know? I'll come back for that. I, I love, there's a lot that we can go into there. But Mercedes, what, what's, what's your view of our cohort? Thank you, Seven. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that I agree 100% with Seven. But you see, I guess in my situation, from my experience, I would say your generation is what made me where I am today because of how I was brought up. You know, remember, like I always say, I would not be who I am today if it wasn't for my parents or my grandmother, I would say, because it was from them and still in certain rules that made me who I am today. You know, sometimes when you're young and you sit down and you think, oh gosh, why well, can't I go outside to play or why well, can't do this and why well, can't do that? And then, you know, 10, 15 years after you look back and you say, you know, thank God my parents brought me up this way. You know, thank God they made me do this. Thank God they made me do that because it would have carried my direction elsewhere. So, I mean, I feel like every generation has its good and its bad, but I feel like that generation, that generation made me who I am today. And so far, I really have no regrets out of it. But I do understand where he is coming from because I do know a lot of people who are stuck into that mentality of women must be this way and men must be that way. But in my family, it was really not like that. Women will do as equally as, you know, anybody could achieve anything or learn anything or, you know. Mm -hmm. so those generations is what made me where, where I am today. Mm -hmm. I, I will admit I'm starting to lose hope in my own generation a little bit, you know. I, I will admit, you know, so that's why I'm saying that there's good and bad in every generation. What what would you say, Mercedes, in terms, and I know when we say bad, you don't mean it as uh, uh, terrible. It's just maybe areas that you saw, it, it could have been different. What aspects you see in that could make a difference or would have made a difference um, in terms of you growing up or what is happening now? Are you still at home? Are you still at home yes. with your parents? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Are you, um, is there any aspects in terms of how they, their habits, because we have some habits, different type of habits. It could be what we say, what we do, our value system, et cetera. Do you um see any aspect there that, that you feel could have been different? To be honest, I have no complaints right now. I mean, don't get me wrong. Maybe 15 years ago, I would have been a little more bratty because I would not have understand the world how it is today. But now, I mean, I, 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 I can't really, I, I can't, there's nothing to complain about, nothing to change. Because it, all, it worked out very positively. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And one, yeah. Of the, one of the things that we want in these conversations is to allow, we, we literally using this as holding up a mirror to ourselves. So your feedback, we know that you all turned out okay. <laughs> we, we know that it's settled, but it's good to have a bit of reflection to, to facilitate easier communications and so on. Tabani, you look like you want to say something. I mean, the dynamic home, well, my, my parents were divorced. So I, I grew up with a single mom, right? Yeah. Um, so a lot of challenges I would have gone through would have, you know, been, you know, along the lines of survival. Yeah. So I would not have agreed with every decision my mother would have made because I would not have understood, you know, what was really happening at the time, right? Yeah. As, as, as I got older, I started to understand, you know, from the male perspective and from, her perspective as a female, you know, going through the ringers, 
and making these decisions. And then becoming an, an adult, I understood it even more. Um, my, my, what I think could have been handled differently on, on, my, on my parents' side, both parents' side, is, is uh, the way they communicate. Um, financial literacy is a very sensitive subject, I guess, for the, the older generation. I don't know why, but um, to me, I think exploring the topic of money, <clears throat> even, even your own financial situation to, to bring it to, across to um, a teenager or whatever, to understand you know, how the world actually works for you and what it, what it would look like for me when I reach that age. Because as far as I know, you're paying for me to go to school. Everything seems hunky-dory on my end. And I don't know what to expect when I hit the world of work. So for me, that communication with, you know, certain topics, because they don't teach this in school. You know, you go out to the world of work and you get your first paycheck and it's, it's great until you have to contribute. And then you have yeah. to travel. And then all of a sudden, wait, your money seems like less, you know? Um, so I would say for, on both sides, you know, that communication for certain topics that would better prepare you for the future. Um, for my mom, well, she tried her best. And to be honest, I wouldn't find no fault with my mom. I, I agree with every decision. I, I think she could repeat them 10 times over with me and I would turn out the same way. I'm, I'm glad for, for her style. My dad, same way. His, his, his approach was very, um, you know, tough love. You know, and that is to make you, you know, more, more male, more masculine, more tough, you know, because the world out there isn't, you know, the way it is when you're home. It's not cushioned. It's not, you know, you wake up and turn on. It's not like that. You go out there, you have to grind, get these things for yourself and make, a, you know, build a life. So he taught a, a very tough love approach. But I honestly think he could have done that differently. What, what, and, and that's, that's the, what we're trying to get here. We are finding in many households or, or family groupings, you have multiple generations and we spent, a, they call us the silent, some of us are silent, some of us boomers, there's a lot of shame, there's a lot of wanting to project the achievement and not talk about how this achievement was made and that, that in some ways has made life probably difficult. Um, Mercedes, in your context, it may have been different. So what we want to hear is, all right, you're on the receiving end of it. You turned out good. <laughs> so we know the story has a good ending. <laughs> and, and, and what are some of the lessons? Because not many, some of us are having real difficulties living in an intergenerational family where there are three, four, five, or six generations to deal right, with. Well, I'll have to talk more about work then because yes, that and it could be a family or work. Home it yes. Yeah, so for work, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. Um, so at work, I work with one silent generation, uh, one baby boomer, and I think a Gen X. Huh, you wow, you all don't like to hear young people give their own opinion yeah i don't know yeah, why correct. Mm -hmm. i mean i would like to think you know with the technology around us the, the wealth of knowledge you know that i would like to say we are more educated than you would think even with certain topics i mean i mean not i, I don't want to say i'm more educated but i am yes, educated enough to have an opinion yes you are a you sensible are. opinion <laughs> And an opinion that I know can work, but due to the fact that it's coming from someone who is way younger, it's almost like, who are you to tell me? You know, it's like you're you're still a child. Surprisingly, at 30, I'm still viewed as a child to baby boomers and the silent generation, which is which that is, is correct, which is very weird because in my mind I feel like an adult I'm doing. You know, but you are adult. adulting, you know, I am adulting, you know, I'm paying my mortgage, you know, I got married, I have a child, you know, I'm, I'm running a business, 
I'm taking care of my life, but I'm still viewed as 20, 19, 18, which is ridiculous. So they don't take advice from, from the younger generation, which I don't understand. And um, how we communicate, for some reason, there's a, a huge barrier in how you all would perceive the information to how we would try to bring it across. Um, so I'll say communication is definitely a big issue. I mean, no matter how hard I try, I mean, there are probably many ways to get it across, but so far, it's, it's <laughs> challenging. The exhausted all. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like every day you're trying, you're trying, and you know, it's, it's like a, a uphill battle, you know? Mercedes, you were going to say something? Oh, no, what he's saying is right about always being referred to as a child, and I'm saying it you just now, like, everywhere and, and anything it doesn't even what group you're in what community you're part of the, your generation does view us as a child constantly i think i'll be 40 and still be referred to as a child you know but um in terms of that communication aspect i have given up on your generation i probably don't look at it as a problem anymore so i it's, it's like a norm to me now you know it's like okay you say that white couch is blue okay i will say okay because it is true, you know, your, 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 your generation will be so adamant. No, but you see, you don't know because back in 1964, how that became that colony for this place. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's... Well, I like to say, Kevin, what you're saying is really has been the, uh, still is the complaint from your generation. And I think if we are honest with ourselves, it is a fact. It is a fact uh, that we, we have, come to the conclusion that we don't like to let go. We want to hold on to that, that power and that status and feel that if we, you know, say let go the reins, that then we're not useful again. So I feel because of that, the fear that if you, if you give up the reins, if you let go, that then we 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 get become extinct and you will please. That's why we so my children. Yeah, but but there's a transition of power. So you, you need mean, to so they enforcing you know authority. But what you know, here you speak and and I know that could be very tough on you all. <laughs> and you tend to give and say say well, and and I use any word that I hear some along and say well you all go along if you want. If you want to be stuck like that, you do your thing and you just leave them alone. But it would be nice if if we could could recognize that and with chatting like this, chats like this, um, we hope that the message reached the, you know <laughs> enough um, persons out there in the workplace that could understand that it's not about that. And um, again, we and I'm saying we because our our cohort and those of us who are still out there in the workplace, um, it is sometimes do, they may not understand the, the, the modern way, the technology and, and, and the new way of doing things because when they studied, when they did their, their studies in whatever field, it was done in that way. They were very successful and it worked for them. And they think you're coming now to bring these new ideas, which they're not sure are going to work. Mm -hmm. So it really keep having that, especially in the workplace, that 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 conflict mm -hmm. there. Um, I hope you all don't give up. Let me ask a question. <laughs> get some new ways to try again. <laughs> before we get there, before we get to, to not giving up, I, I want to get into the mind of a Mercedes. When you say well, okay, the door is blue. And Tevin, when you were like, what's wrong with you all? There is something that I know is going on in your heads about that pack them up in the corner. And I want to put a theory forward. And I want you to tell me if this is what is really happening because I think our cohort needs to understand. 
I think you all know that we're irrelevant and that we're wrong. I and would I, not say. No, I'm giving my I'm not saying the word irrelevant. Yeah. Okay, I don't I'm, think I'm, I'm giving, let me give my theory. Let me give my theory. And I tend to be the extreme one. So we are there with our not optimal way of doing things. And because you all are sharper, you, you, you know the modern way and you understand how it can be done smart. You all understand AI, artificial intelligence. Chat GPT is not a threat to you. You would look at something and figure it out in an hour where we will take two weeks to figure it out. So what is it that makes you not get angry at us being in your way, but that allows you to sit back and say, well, okay, the door is blue. Okay, I'm going ahead and doing whatever. What is it that you see in us that makes you just decide to leave us alone and be polite because you're well brought up? Conversations with the older generation, silent baby boomers, Gen X, you realize it is what it is. And you start to understand the pattern, right? You know, it's eventually going to phase out. It's just a matter of time. So instead of fighting it, what you try to do is you try to make changes. I must say that you count in the years. Yeah, you know. You count in the years. It's going to be fine. Just years. easy. Sorry, I have to say that to me. Go ahead. So, so for me, like, all right. I, I tend to mesh the knowledge of the prior generations with mm -hmm. modern day uh, theories, right? And yeah. you try to find a solution because to me, problems are always there. It's finding a proper solution to go forward is the problem, right? The older generation sees it one way, the younger generation sees it a different way. But sometimes you need that, that you know, old and the new brought together to make it go through. So understanding that, I really don't fight it because I know eventually you're going to be wrong and then I'm going to get to put my point across. So just knowing that, just as you said, counting it, I, I know at some point I'm going to get my piece in, but it's always going to be like that until you exit the, the workforce. So I wouldn't say uh, you're irrelevant. <laughs> you're very relevant. <laughs> very relevant to me because um, my the way I built my career was off of experience, and you know that's that's the next thing too. The baby boomers it was coming back to the uh, achievement aspect. They push this lifestyle of you know you go to school, you get a degree, you come out to the world, and boom, life is made, right? And for those of you who can't, it seems like yeah, you know you're gonna be a garbage man, which or, or shoveling dirt like I didn't like that it, to me when I was going to school it wasn't it wasn't you know like um a good thing to pick up a trade it seemed like that's that's very low end you know if you want a good life you have to become a doctor a lawyer a, you know an architect an engineer that sort of thing and some of us yes we want to be engineers but we are not you know picking up the school work that is currently being served to us. Some of it's us- technical, not the engineering. Yeah, more mm -hmm. technical, yeah. not. And some of us actually could pick up the work academically, but not the way it's being served, you know? So for me, I, I work better when I read books. So I learned a lot on my own versus when I was in school, mm -hmm. right? But obviously, if I have to go through, you know, the, the school curriculum, I would have a hard time because you're testing me on something that you want to teach me is not necessarily something that I want to learn. One example would be algebra. Like, I mean, I, I did it, but I don't understand why I had to be forced to learn it. Mm. You know, it, it's not that, that relevant to me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do physics and, you know, stuff like that, but it wasn't coupled with my subject. So I had to take it up as a finish the syllabus. Finish the syllabus. I had to finish the syllabus, you know? Um, but the things I wanted to learn really was not taught in school. Yeah. Mercedes, um, what is your um, workplace? Well, going back to your point, um, where Tevin was speaking, where you mentioned about, you know, looking at your as irrelevant and 
um, wrong, I think was the two terms you use. I mean, you don't give yourself enough credit because I mean, I would like to say up until, up until today, before I left work, I still learn or rely on your generation. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the workplace. I'm talking about the workplace. I'm talking about at home. I'm talking about anything, anything in aspects of life. Mm -hmm. But just as how I will sit down and listen to you, teach me. You don't like to sit down and listen to me, teach you something too. And I think that is where the problem lies with the communication. So it's not even about, you know, we feel like you all know it all, or I feel like I, our generation know it all. I think we both know equally to help each other. But it's just that one generation is willing to learn. Oh, it's not that we're willing to learn. We have to learn. You know, they say, and you know, like, you know, I'm older, so you must listen to me. But, you know, we don't, you don't listen to us. And I think that is where the problem lies in every setting. It doesn't matter which setting it yeah. falls into. So I think I think that is the main issue. It's not about who knows more or that we don't think y'all are relevant. I, I am almost 80 and I'm not so good with technology. I'm not as tech savvy, I will be honest. So it's not even about who knows more or who's more versed in this. So it's just that we equally know. It's just that we could take a book and take a page in each other's book, mm -hmm. but it's who is willing to, to listen. Mm -hmm. Who is willing yeah. to listen? Share the information. Yeah. No, sometimes That's we will listen to the information, the information we, we, over it, but you don't want to listen. You know, we all, oh, you're, you're, you're young, you're the children. We're heading into 30 years old and we're children. You have so children get... and a wife and you're still a child. And you still feel like a child. Correct. I have friends who feel like children still because, I mean, they don't think they could survive without their parents. You know, and they are 30 plus. And I think we set it up like that. Jennifer, I don't think so. We set it up we like that. Up because you want yeah, to be, I mean, want I to be relevant. Because you want to feel relevant. Again, yeah. it's control. I, I always look at it as it's control. So I agree definitely. And it, it came out last week in our conversation with, with Ronaldo. And, they were more polite. Um, <laughs> that... We need to listen more. We really, really need to really listen and stop believing that we must give our opinion on something. We must have the, my, my mom used to say to us, like, you must have the last say. <laughs> Don't care what is being told you. Um, and going back, yes, Devin, I, I believe we also want to maintain that control. We're not seeing you all as, as adults, even if you have your own family. We still want to be involved in, in the um in, in giving our opinion and trying to, to say make suggestions. Let me make, say it nicely, make the suggestions as how we feel our grants should be brought up, you know? And um it is very difficult to, to just watch on when, when you're not in agreement with, with, with the way you know things are being done. And this is a, this is a very hard lesson, I think, for us to learn. You know? It is. I mean, it, it's easy to break the cycle, but not all of us could break that cycle. Like, yeah, I think we yeah. have to, I as agree. millennials and 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 um Gen Z, we have to show you all we are you know, capable, but that comes with, you know, financial literacy and financial stability. I mean, if you're unable to, to handle yourself financially, you're going to have to rely on your parent. Yeah. So until you have that, that under control, you, you cannot break the cycle because you still have to ask mom and dad for help, you know? So that's why I said, for me, I had no choice but to pick up, uh, you know, an entrepreneurial spirit and go out there and try to make it because like I said, I came into the recession and I, I went back into another recession with, with COVID. So for me, it's, it's about grinding to, to try and show to the older generation that I'm capable of you know, taking on the mantle when that time comes, because I, I would like to believe I've done good for 30, you know, given the, the circumstances that I would have faced. And yet still, it's still not enough you know, to, to, to some. Yeah. 
it's it's somewhere along the lines you're still failing you still seem like you don't know mm, I mean, that is true i don't think i don't think i know everything but give us credit you know give us some credit what it's, it's like you? it's like yeah. it's like you're good but you're not great you're not good enough yeah. because because when i was that age oh i was on the moon you know you're you're with the best of the generations i highly doubt that I think, I think there were mistakes made. Yes, because exactly. As, as I as I talk more and more to, to the older generation, I realize hey, you all make mistakes just like us. Mm -hmm. yeah. the same things we did, but yet still judge us for it, which is a bit hypocritical. What would you say, and uh, both of you all, you know, you have friends that you you hang with. In terms of responsibility, that's something that our generation tend to see sometimes that um, the younger generation, they're not responsible enough to, 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 um, to let them do certain things. And you spoke about financial literacy and we, we tend to be very secretive. And the reason why sometimes you don't really discuss finances or really say this your, your state of your financial situation is because we believe maybe they're not ready yet they may not understand although you're this age and you may be you, you all are both professionals in your own right we still feel that you're not ready yet to take on certain responsibilities um, what what you I... how you what you will say on that I wouldn't say that is based on generation. I, I would say that's based on a person because, I mean, I have people in my generation who are fairly responsible and yet I know people in your generation who are not. So okay. I would not say that that is based on generation at all. I think that is based on the person themselves, their background, their interests, where they see themselves, how, how responsible they are within themselves, not from their generation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tevin, you feel the same way, Anna? Uh, well, in my generation, I, I agree with Mercedes. We, some, are financially literate, but that's from who I know. They, they wanted that. So they had to go out there and seek it, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't passed down. Um, the, 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 the older generation that I come across, um, the silent generation freely talks about, you know, finances. You know, they, they talk about how it was, you know, in World War II or whatever back then, you know, how money was, how in the war. Yeah, you know how things were, how great it was, you know, even after the war, flying out, this, that, that, whatever, right? But uh the, the baby boomer generation, at least who I would have encountered, they had a lot of fear around talking about finances. So you want to talk to them about stocks, it's you know, insurance as a scam, you know, stuff like it's like. Like, how do I yeah. get to a point of financial stability by just working? Like, there, there has to be other routes because I'm not going to make enough, you know, to, to retire. So what do I do? You know, save for a rainy day. Oh, wow, that's, that's, that's real help. <laughs> you know, I don't even know what is the rainy day until that rainy day comes, you know? So that's what I mean by, you know, it's kind of like secretive because you all would have gone through certain hurdles. You know, so you would better understand what a rainy day is. You know, that rainy day to me is what uh, a day I don't get paid. What uh, I can't buy lunch. Like, what is the rainy day? And you really mean if you lose your job? Well, that's very different. That's that's lose being able to save. That's that's being able to save for six months. That's that's not saving one month. You know, so those topics weren't really we didn't really have. You know, we learned it. This our generation had to learn it. I learned it because of business, right? So um, hmm. that's what I meant with the, the, the secrecy take. And I think that could have been a lot better. Mercedes and Tevin, this this is I I I I think you've said some truths that you know it's like oh gosh, <laughs> Jennifer, we have to do better, <laughs> but. I'm looking at time. You and, 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 <laughs> it's it's not only it's not only listen. It, it's we have to we have to respect and appreciate that we 
brought you up to be these we sent you to school we, wherever the school was it could have been school of life how to negotiate life or school of of, of tertiary education and degree or school of tech work but we are the parents who molded you and shaped you so that you can learn and can adapt and have the capacity that you have and and we're almost afraid to face the capacity and have it come to us to improve us and and I really do think that's one of our we have I don't think we are right off but there are things about us but what you're talking to an audience of 5.8g people who are responding beautifully to this program this series where we're talking to the other generations what what are two things that you really want us to understand about you that you believe that we just don't get one we are not children <laughs> <laughs> um, that, was, that was one biggest one we are not kids um even if we are not fully there we want to be adults you know we want to to gain that freedom and you know live on our own I don't, I don't think anybody wants to you know be home i don't think anybody wants to you want to have that sort of uh, independence you know you you live on your terms or whatever it, it may be right um the second the second one would be uh what you also know about us is um we are capable we are capable of you know um making better on your decisions or making better on what you would have done because I, I know you don't want it to go down. You want us to improve on it. And we are fully capable. You know, with the right tools and, and, and teachings and conversations, we'll be able to, you know, take what you've, what you've laid down, the foundation, and, you know, carry it into the future for the generation. Well, I would say after Gen Z, because in a sense, they would be... Alpha. Alpha. Alpha, yeah. Alpha. Because they Because Gen Z is like... Right now. <laughs> yeah. So we will be able to, you know, shape and mold something even better for, for them because we are in this technological era and we are more equipped also to with the Gen Z to you know, uh, guide us into that future. And, and I think with your teachings and allowing us to actually take the reins from a younger age or, or at least allow us some experience from a younger age, we will be better equipped mm -hmm. to handle and make political you know, decisions, business decisions, stuff like that. Because not many millennials sit in managerial positions. Yeah. Okay, Mercedes, what are your two? Um, um I I second him. He basically he basically explained what we were talking about. But I mean, to reiterate what you said, you know, you are the ones who who sent us to school, regardless of whatever it was. You are the ones who molded us and made us what we are today. So why is it that you cannot believe and trust that we will be okay? It's time to let you know the bird out the nest now, as you rightfully said. So if you brought us where we are today and we are 30 years old plus and we are okay, what why wouldn't we be okay in 10 years? You know, I mean you said it yourself. You said it yourself. Yeah. You're quite correct. <laughs> we need to learn to trust and Tevin, yes, know that. We did it. We prepared you all. So just leave you alone and not get scared thinking that you're going to fail. I think at that too, eh? the fear that, oh gosh, you might make it. We or can't hand over the treasury. We can't hand over the treasury. Yeah. We can't and put money on the account. If, <laughs> and as an entrepreneur, if you feel they're not, you're not doing things you're not seeing the results early. You know, they tend not to see the results mm -hmm. early because yeah. many of us had this salary <laughs> job that don't matter what at the end of the month you're getting a, you're getting a salary. Um, for those who may not have been familiar with entrepreneurship, then, and you going into it, it's, it's a fear, you know, they want. <laughs> so they don't trust and, and want to say, well, you know what? Think you should go into a safe environment where you I mean I'm not saying every month. I'm yeah. not saying we wouldn't fail. I mean that's yes, what but, but, 
I, I have I have failed many times to reach where I am today. It was not a smooth road, mm. but I think we'll be okay. It's not that yeah. we wouldn't fail and we wouldn't make mistakes, but we'll be okay. The thing is, failure is the best lesson, eh? Exactly. It teaches us how to be stronger and I mean, what to avoid. Yeah. What yeah. makes me stronger in my decisions is actually being an entrepreneur, failing, yeah. continuously yeah. failing, knowing that you could have done better, you, you did, you, you messed up. But instead of relying on your boss to come with a solution, you of yourself have to dig deep inside of you and find a way, you know, and in a sense, that's the echo of a lot of millennials. That yes. They want to be able to, to find a solution. They don't want you all to necessarily give us a handout. You know, just a, just a proper guidance, a nudge. We know it's going we to be hard. We want to give the handout to feel safe. We still, I, and I agree, we, we tend to treat you all as, as we, children, that we still want to have a say in your life, you know, mm -hmm. and in what you do, as against trusting, and as you said it, trusting that we did our best. We are proud of you all, and you all, are, I mean, you all have done well. So why not? Why can't we just sit back and say, okay, just let them be. They have to live their life. We lived ours. Now I'm talking to myself here too. <laughs> so it is a learning experience. And definitely what you have, you know, suggested that we are, um, we should look within, check ourselves and release. <laughs> really release. We should be able to sit back and, and, and watch you all and say, we did well. <laughs> Definitely. Mercedes and Tavin, this has been so very, very, very great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank I you. Think on, the, on the next episode, I want to ask you all the questions. Uh, <laughs> what would you like to ask us? Oh. We allow in your question. Okay, one question, <laughs> boy. I uh, so you would have, you know, gone through when you were young and you would, you would see us growing up, right? Um, in terms of differences, are there any differences with how we go through life versus how you went through life? Or... I would say definitely. For me, I would say yes. I, your, your generation take a lot more what we would see as risk. Mm -hmm. than, than, and I'm thinking of using, like, looking at where I am and my childhood, your age group. I think you're, you're more, um, you take more risk. I think in terms of, of wanting to, not wanting, but going into entrepreneurship very easily as mm -hmm. against us not doing it like that. And you, you're going into it with that confidence, you know? So the other thing, um, I find you all are very much more open in discussion. You're not like a very like secret service. You you discuss, you say things, you, you and you do it. Um, so we know how to- not with, I, I won't say without a care, <laughs> but you go brave. <laughs> so so that that's that that would be my answer to your question and we weren't raised like that eh? we were raised to you know shh, to big people talking mm -hmm. you know right um, if you have a problem you know you you keep that to yourself you know you don't talk back to your boss you don't you know you don't, you don't mm -hmm. express yourself until mm -hmm. you, you meet the real world mm -hmm. and you realize yeah no this this is not how it works you have to talk you have to speak up for yourself Else you'll be taken Do advantage. You understand how you're shocking our system, right? Yeah. I, I would tell you that it is, I suppose there's, there's a 10 year gap between Jantva and I, and I'm a boomer, but I could also morph into, into yeah. Gen X. And mm -hmm. so I made conscious decisions while raising my children. And they were under my total control to be nice and liberal and, you know progressive and so on and when they turned on me and I realized that I was talking to adults and I didn't have children 
Mm, Most like difficult that. thing for me to do is sometimes to bite my tongue and shut up and, and let this experiment play out. They are not start literally going to my stomach and I'm listening to you all and the nuts are there. And they are sleepless nights. They are like, they know what they're doing. Carry on, zip up your mouth. <laughs> and I have so friends, then, they always come out okay. <laughs> so then if I had to ask, <clears throat> what is one thing you don't like about our generation? What's that, Masri? Sorry. What, you, what I don't like? What, what is one thing oh. you don't like about our generation oh. at all? Actually, for What's me, the most issue with? I, for me, I, I really admire you all. And the thing that, uh, there's nothing that I can say I don't like. What I have to control is my fear and my, wanting to be very, very protective, especially because I, 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 one of my children has a handicap and I have to remind myself, no, you, you are not to live his life. You are let, let him live his life. And the other one I think is just too privileged for his own good. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I don't know that I can say, I don't like something about you. There are lots of you that I admire, but you, you, you cause us a lot of anxiety because mm. you 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 don't plan out like we planned out and and we would have known three alternatives for a scenario but you all just go and you'll figure out the alternatives as you go along i think that is reckless and it causes me all, like all, eh? all of us all of us <laughs> what i would say like Darian, and as she said, we have a 10 year gap. My children are much older. And there is nothing, I wouldn't say I don't like anything. Again, I have to keep, they have me in check. And, and the check is that I keep praying <laughs> because certain decisions, I'm so good, you, you know? Choice of partners, Jennifer. Choice of partners. It have me very anxious <laughs> because one of my daughters, similar to you, Tevin, is very much an entrepreneur. <laughs> um, I so gosh, because uh, <laughs> you just have me scared because of you have a young daughter. What you'll do? What you'll do? They have you have no money. What you will do? With, because again, and I was told that I want to put them in a nice little box. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the nice little box that you have the job, you're a professional, you earn for this money, and you do X, Y, and Z. And I like say, the box have no fun in it. <laughs> it's tricky. <laughs> no, I don't have any freedom. You're, you're just like you're stuck doing the same thing. And um, the same. I want to see the Not like us. <laughs> we will stay in a job. We stayed in a job for, for your whole life. You understand? Very mm -hmm. safe. So, it's nothing I don't like, and it, it, but it's, it's an acceptance of, of the new way of life, I, I, I would say. But I, I, I love how they, they've turned out. I'm just scared. <laughs> I'm just scared. Anxious. You know? Anxious. <laughs> but I, I can't say I don't like anything. I'm really not upset about anything they have done. I'm just scared a bit. <laughs> I think I think us millennials need to have a, a group meeting. Mm -hmm. Just to share you know, mm -hmm. our, um, our experiences that you know help each other go along because some of us may have a, a, a harder time, you know, getting through with, with the adults that that and, and interpreting the information yeah. to go forward. While some of us have already captivated that information and already, you know applying it, you know, like Mercedes and myself and many others. But I, yes. I would have to say, I love how you all collaborate with each other. We don't know about that. Okay. It doesn't matter your field. I love how you all talk to each other and support each other. And I think that is why you all look at us and say, yeah, the door is blue. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we know, we know, we know. <laughs> oh my God, this is so great.
So, so, so great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer? No, all the best. You're really doing great, Mr. D. Seven, you all are on a great path. Yeah. I am sure your parents are very, very proud. They may, not, <laughs> they may be a bit scared about your future, but they're very proud. And it is really beautiful, you know, chatting with you all and hearing your views and how you see us. And I am very, very sure our audience, our cohort listening in, be very, very happy and have learned a lot from you all and what you have shared. Yeah. No? So thank you. And we are here if you ever need to bong something off about old books. <laughs> no, well, that's why we like talking with you guys, you know, um, it yeah. helps us. So exactly. Yeah. But, but listen to us too, you know, when, when we have our opinion. You know? Definitely. <laughs> these conversations with these young people <laughs> oh we coming out <laughs> yeah we have to face we have to face the reality of, of, of the stage we are at you know mm -hmm. and um because we want it to work we we love our children and they love us and we do, will really like to see that um you know they move on happy and we and we move on happy too <laughs> Without being scared about the future. I, I think that's it. Yeah. We prepared good successors and we need to leave them to take over that second act stage. They, they will be fine. And we need to go mine our business and build our third act stage. Yes. And when they come to us for advice, give the advice and let them go and choose how they will apply it. And, and don't try to control their lives. Don't, don't don't try to control their lives, how they dress, how they eat, how they who they chose to go out with, when they come home, how they go in, and how they bring and how they bring up the grants. How they bring up the how they put them up where they live. I know that will be tougher, but but we heard them. Yeah, we heard Ronaldo and Mandy last week. And we heard, you know, Kevin and did this week. So, yeah. A in. lot of food for thought. Chill. <laughs> okay. See you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. 50 plus tribe and follow us from Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. Thank you for joining us on this Connections 50 plus 5.8G Alive show. We hope you enjoyed the lively conversation <laughs> and look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really love getting your feedback. Bye, Bye for now. now.